Guard yourselves, therefore, against the righteousness of churchgoers. For by word and deed would they hope to make you subject unto certain men of authority, that they might hedge up the way against you, that you might be encompassed round about with the doctrines and creeds of men. Watch, therefore, and beware. For in the beginning did the teachers and preachers of the church seize the keys of deep knowledge, and with great cunning did they hide them beneath the robes of their authority, securing them against you for the sake of their traditions. I tell you truly, they shall not enter into the kingdom of God, neither would they permit that you should enter either. Well, hello again. The passage I just read to you comes from Wisdom chapter 12, verses 55 through 57. As you know by now, these passages are found in a new book of scripture called the Song of God. In today's discourse, I will discuss the doctrines which are created by men, doctrines which do not come from your Heavenly Father and Heavenly Mother. And to begin with, I must start with the doctrine of perfection. This idea that God was perfect, Christ was perfect. How many of you have heard the passage from the Bible which goes like this? Be you therefore perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. Do you know why it says that? It says that because you can't be perfect. I remember back in June of 1979 when I first met God. When I stood face to face with your Heavenly Father and Heavenly Mother, I asked them, are you perfect? Heavenly Mother asked me if I had ever been around someone who thought they were perfect. Well, of course we all have. We've all been around people who think they're perfect. Heavenly Mother asked me if I thought that had been a pleasant experience for me. Well, of course it's not. It never is. How does God define God? How does Heavenly Father and Heavenly Mother describe themselves. They do not describe themselves as perfect, but they do describe themselves as holy. There is a difference between being holy and being perfect. What is that difference? Let's have Heavenly Father answer that question for you. I'm going to turn to the book of the First Endowment and this is your Heavenly Father speaking. And listen to what your Heavenly Father says and see if you don't agree with what he is saying. I'll begin with the 8th verse of the 4th chapter and go all the way through the 14th. Come, my son, and in my wisdom some confidence take. For I would have you know that this capacity to do good and evil have the lords and gods established for the sake of all their lineage finding therein that gentle grace which would give hope and comfort unto all those who would live the mortal life. Consider, therefore, the consequences if the lords and gods of this greater light were made incapable of doing evil, being made all perfect within and without. For if this were so, then would there cease to be any degree of compassion or mercy or forgiveness of any who should be overcome by the lesser portion. And all which fall by, by way of some sin, be it great or small, would find in the gods of glory no degree of understanding, being made incapable by way of perfection. For this cause has it been decreed that unto all celestial beings should there be found some small vice, a slight but happy imperfection, harmless yet delightful to the senses. For among the gods is it rightly known that such small imperfections give birth to a greater wisdom regarding the issues of that mortal life wherein the children of God are made to live. And there springs up in the bosom of all a tender affection filled with wisdom and compassion and mercy. For the gods know full well that in the living of the mortal life is there found a time when kindness is greater than judgment, when compassion is more to be sought than piety. 
This profound yet subtle wisdom do all the lords and gods of this greater light tender gently among themselves, whereby holiness is made altogether happy and filled with delight. Now that is what your Heavenly Father has to say about perfection and holiness. How many times have you had to deal with someone who thought they were morally perfect? Did you find that pleasant? Did you find in that person any degree of compassion, kindness, forgiveness, mercy? No. I doubt that you did. What you find instead is smug, arrogant self-righteousness. A quickness to judge. A quickness to condemn. That's what you find in someone who is perfect. But when a person knows that they're not perfect, when they themselves have engaged in the follies often found in living a mortal life, from that person you will find understanding. You will find compassion. You will find forgiveness. Why? Because they've often made mistakes just like you make mistakes, like I make mistakes. I'm going to tell you right now. I'm Azrael Andai Amen and I'm not perfect. I have never said I was. I probably never will be. What we want to know is, why was this doctrine created? This doctrine of perfection. Well, they had to create it back in the 1st, 2nd, and 3rd centuries A.D. in order to establish other doctrines. And what were those doctrines? Well, one was blood atonement. The blood atonement of Christ, the innocent sacrifice. So they needed the doctrine of perfection. They had to put forth the idea that Christ was perfect. But how could Christ be perfect if he's born like us? Because according to theologians, the sin of Adam is passed through the blood of the mother when she's carrying a fetus. So they had to come up with the doctrine of the virgin birth. The doctrine of perfection is essential to the doctrine of blood atonement. But what does God have to say about this blood atonement? 